The biology experiment system has four independent parts. They are pyrolytic release experiment, gas exchange experiment, labeled release experiment, and finally, the gas chromatograph mass spectrometer. The pyrolytic release experiment seeks to test if any organism in the soil uses carbon dioxide in the air to build complex organic molecules to sustain itself. Dry soil scooped by the robotic arm is placed in an incubator chamber. Radioactive carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide using carbon-14 is introduced into the chamber. A xenon light is then turned on to mimic Martian daylight. The experiment runs for five Martian days. The chamber is then heated to 120 degrees Celsius. This is done to release any unreacted carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide trapped in the soil. The air from the chamber is then flushed out into the Martian atmosphere and the sample soil is heated to 650 degrees Celsius for pyrolysis to occur in the soil. The vapor products released by pyrolysis is collected in the chamber until it's purged by a stream of helium into a vapor trap which traps heavy organic molecules like methane but allow carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide to pass to the radioactive detector. If carbon-14 is detected, that's evidence that a potential organism is creating organic molecules using the carbon dioxide from the air in the chamber. To make sure the conclusion is justified, another sample from the same batch of soil is first sterilized by heating it to 120 degrees Celsius for three hours. After that, it's introduced into the chamber like before. If no carbon-14 was detected, then it's good indication that the initial result from the first experiment was caused by organisms in the soil. However, if carbon-14 is also detected in the sterile sample, that would indicate that some other chemical process is taking the carbon out of the air. In the actual test done by Viking, carbon-14 was detected in both samples, although the amount detected in the sterilized sample was slightly less, but that difference was bigger than the margin of error. The conclusion from this is that the process that pulled carbon from the air was most likely of chemical and not biological origin. Next on our list of biological experiments is the gas exchange experiment. This experiment tests for gases in the incubation chamber that could have been produced by organisms after nutrition has been added to the soil. Soil is added to the incubation chamber, the air is purged, and the chamber is filled with a mixture of helium and CO2. The helium is used to increase the pressure inside the chamber without increasing the concentration of CO2. A rich nutrient solution is added below the soil sample in just the right amount to come into contact with it. Every day for the next 12 days, a sample of air in the incubation chamber is sent to the chromatograph column. This column is used to separate the gas flow based on its composition. As the gas flow comes out of the column, it's separated in time based on composition. The flow is then sent to a thermal conductivity detector, or TCD, for detection. TCD measures the thermal conductivity of the gas flow by measuring the resistance of a temperature-sensitive resistor placed in the path of the gas flow. The resistance will change based on how well the compound in the gas flow can conduct heat away from the resistor. The actual result from Viking showed that the typical gases expected such as hydrogen and methane were not detected. The next experiment is the one that's still inconclusive to some scientists. This is the labeled release experiment. This experiment is designed to test metabolic activities in the soil sample moistened with a dilute solution of very simple organic compounds. If organisms exist in the soil, they might release CO2 into the atmosphere from breaking down the organic compounds provided in the solution. Starting with soil in the chamber, a nutrient solution containing radioactive carbon-14 is added to the soil. The incubation chamber is connected to the detector chamber which contains the radioactive detectors, VR2. If organisms in the soil are using the nutrients and releasing CO2, then they will in time accumulate inside the detector chamber where they will be detected. The radioactivity in the detector chamber is monitored continuously for the first seven Martian days. After that, more nutrition is added to the soil and the detector monitors the carbon-14 for another six Martian days. The experiment is repeated 
but with sterilized soil. The actual result showed that Viking measured a high amount of radioactive CO2 in the normal sample when the nutrition solution was added, but very little in the sterilized sample. This is an indication of possible microorganism in the soil. 